given China's inflation risk remains benign, at least for the next uh, 6 to 12 months, uh, we do see room for additional monetary easing, uh, for example, can be uh, in the form of a reserve requirement ratio cut, targeted liquidity injection, or even in terms of deposit rate cut or LPR rate cut. Uh, however, uh, we do believe we are perhaps reaching the end of this round of monetary easing uh, because of uh, global commodity prices remain elevated, global inflation continue to rise, uh, major central banks uh, most likely will accelerate policy tightening. Uh, for example, right now, uh, beyond the one-year tenor, uh, U.S. interest rate uh, now sits above uh, the renminbi uh, government uh, uh, bond yields, uh, which uh, potentially implies capital inflows uh, will uh, moderate or even there will be a risk of uh, capital outflows. So this potentially will constrain additional monetary easing down the road. Uh, instead, uh, we believe China should perhaps rely more on fiscal easing uh, going forward. Um, specifically, I mean, this year we have 2.8% of fiscal deficit. Uh, there's already well-planned fiscal spending. Uh, the PBOC recently announced it will make about $1 trillion of profit contribution from FX reserve management uh, for fiscal transfer to support fiscal spending. That is uh, equivalent to about uh, 1% of GDP uh, in terms of uh, uh, central banks' uh, support uh, for fiscal spending this year. And the PBOC already front-loaded about 600 billion renminbi of payments. So hopefully uh, fiscal policies uh, will also take a more proactive stance uh, going forward uh, in order to stabilize economic growth.